Welcome friends, I'm so happy you're here for an Agatha Creates tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the Red Heart Granny Square All-in-One Yarn that you can use to make these African flower hexes. If you want to skip straight to the tutorial, I'm going to be putting the timestamp on the screen. You can also check the chapters, that'll take you right to it. However, beforehand there are some housekeeping items that I need to go through first. So I would encourage you to stick around and listen to it before you start working on these hexes. So let's start from the top. What is the Red Heart Granny Square All-in-One Yarn? The whole concept of this yarn is that you're gonna use the first color in order to make the foundation and the first round of your granny square. When you're done with the first round, the color should change to the next one. You'll work all of your second round using the second color. When you're ready to start the next round, it will switch to the next color. Now, if there is one thing that I want you to take away from my tips, is that this yarn is not magic. I have a theory that the main reason why a lot of the people that I've seen online that struggle with this yarn and say that it doesn't work and say that it's challenging and said it's stressful is that they don't understand that you have to manage your tension in order to make the color change when you want it to change. If you have never heard of color pulling or planned pulling yarn, I would highly encourage you to do so. There are very many YouTube channels that focus just on that. There's also a lot of crochet experts that have videos on this topic. Even if Red Heart is not selling this yarn as planned pulling yarn, that's technically what it is. And they have a whole line of pulling yarn. This is an example of a pooling yarn from them that I already had in my stash. They actually have a whip on a plant pulling blanket that I've been working on for a little while. This is an example of something that you can make using their pooling yarn. It looks very complicated, but it truly isn't. The entire deal of this yarn is that you're going to be using each color to make a certain number of stitches and ideally you will be making the same number of stitches with each color. This yarn was made so that give or take each color has the same amount of yardage so you will be able to make the same number of stitches with each color and then the colors are staggered so each round the color will change one stitch to the side and as it grows it gives this argyle effect now that is the case with their regular pooling yarn what makes this yarn so fantastic is that it has the same concept but in order to make granny square yarns like I mentioned before, there are many YouTube channels out there that are focused on yarn like this. The one that inspired me to try color pulling yarn was It's Time for Yarn. If this looks like something that you would like to try now or sometime in the future, I would absolutely recommend that you check out her channel, check out her videos. She has so much useful information in there and she's a teacher so she's way better at explaining how this works than I am. Now I don't believe that you have to have experience using color pulling or plant pulling yarn in order to make something like this work. It absolutely helps but if you want it enough you will be able to make this. It's not rocket science. That being said, I do believe that this is a yarn that is best for ambitious beginners or experienced crocheters. Um, if you are still struggling with holding your yarn or holding your crochet hook or managing your tension, this might be a little too complex for you just yet. However, as soon as you got that down, you can absolutely make this 
it might even be a good project in order to help you practice tensioning your yarn. So still give it a shot. You can absolutely find this yarn on sale. I'm sure it's on, when I bought it, it was on sale. Maybe when you're watching this, it might not be, but sales come and go all the time. So keep a lookout. Now, I promise that we're almost ready for the tutorial. Before I let you go on ahead and give this a try, I have one last tip for you. And that is, as Erica from It's Time for Yarn would say, you are the boss. You are the one that tells the yarn what to do and when. The whole thing that makes this yarn so much fun to work with is the challenge that it brings with it. I did not manage to get this to work on my first or second or third try. It took me a few tries. However, maybe it's my personality, but that was not a deterrent for me. If anything, that was building in me a need to figure out this yarn. And if you are not interested in a yarn that's gonna challenge you, then that is perfectly fine. This might just not be the project for you. And if my tutorial doesn't work for you, then feel free to just modify it in any way that will end up working for you. This is not a pattern that I came up with. I was inspired to make this by the Cat Lady channel in YouTube. And her pattern, rounds one and two, I kept it the same way as she does it. I heavily modified rounds three, four, and five in order for this to work with my tension. If you find that the way that I'm doing it, you're just left with too much yarn at the end, then I would recommend that you go check out her channel. I'll try to link it either on the screen or in the description box below, where her rounds three, four, and five are a lot tighter. All right, without further ado, here is the tutorial. All right, let's get started with this tutorial for the Red Heart Granny Square All-in-One Yarn to make these African flower hexes. Now, what I'm going to recommend first is that you take out all of the first color. That way you will avoid the yarn not flowing seamlessly through your hands. Now, how much yarn you'll need for a tail, I believe is going to depend on the colorway and the dye lot that you're working with. For this specific yarn and this specific skein that I'm working with, I figured out uh, the approximate amount of yarn that I need for a tail. Now, we're going to start with a chain 5 and slip stitch into the beginning chain. Chain 3, then we're going to do a double crochet into that ring. Now the repeat for the first round is to chain 1 and do 2 double crochets into the ring. And you're going to do that 5 times. Now you don't need to put the yarn into a ball the way that I did. I did it because my skein was getting floppy and difficult to work with, so I took out the yarn that amounts to one hexi and put it into a ball. You Again, you don't have to do this, I just did it because it was most comfortable for me. Also if you want to do a magic circle, go ahead and do that. I prefer the security of a chain and then slip stitch, so that's what I'm doing. And this is when we're gonna find out, do I have a lot of yarn left, do I use up too much, or is it just right? And would you look at that, on my very first try, I got it perfectly. This is what we want to see. We want, at the end of the last double crochet, to already be in the new color. And again, I think that I was able to achieve this on my first try just because I've made so many of these. So just keep practicing and you will get it. Now 
Now before we even start with the next round, let's go ahead and take out all of our next color plus a little bit of the next color. So to start round two, we're going to start with a standing double crochet. I'm going to show you how to make it. You're going to go right into the space that's directly below your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook into that vertical tab. Yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two. If you don't want to do a standing double crochet, you can go ahead and do a chain three or whatever you're most comfortable with. I prefer the look of a standing crochet, so that's what I'm doing. Now we're going to do a double crochet and the repeat for this round is we're going to do in the next space two double crochets chain one and two double crochets do that five times in every chain one space now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to maintain a tension that is natural for me and keep it consistent and then at the end I'm gonna see do I have too much yarn left not enough or is it just right then depending on what comes out we'll make changes appropriately Alright, we are back at the beginning. Let's do two double crochets. And as we can see, I have a lot of yarn left still of this dark blue color. So I know that in order to slip stitch to the beginning double crochet, I need one chain worth of yarn. So let's see how many chains worth of this dark blue color do I still have left. So we need a chain one worth of yarn to connect to the standing double crochet. So I have one, two, three, four, five chains worth of yarn still in this dark color. Now, if this is the very first time that you're trying to do this, you don't know what that means. That means nothing to you but let's just keep it in mind let's go back reassess our tension and then that way you can get a feel for how much looser you may need to go to use up in this case five chains worth of yarn now i'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and i'm going to go a lot looser this time and then we're gonna see how much are we still left with at the end of this round. Now let's start this round again. And this time around, I'm making a much more conscious effort of loosening up my tension compared to what my natural tension would be. And it may not look like I'm going a lot looser, but I can tell just from the way that the yarn is flowing through my fingers. And it's not that easy to maintain a tension that is different from what comes naturally for you. I am making a very conscious effort right here to remind myself to keep it loose. All right, we're back at the beginning. So let's see how much yarn are we gonna be left with this time? 
but would you look at that again we get exactly the amount of yarn that we need when we're done with the double crochet we are now in the new color that is exactly what we want to see now next time that you do the hexes you can kind of gauge just how much looser do you need to go with for this example five chains worth of yarn so let's connect with a slip stitch to that standing crochet Before we even start the round, let's get all of the color that we need. And you're going to do this whether you're working off of a ball like I am right now or off of the skein, it doesn't matter. Take out all of the yarn that you need for this round plus a little bit more. Now to start round three, we're going to do a standing crochet into that space that's directly below our hook. You already know how to do a standing crochet. If you did a chain three or whatever else you did in the previous round, just do that again. So to do this round, we're going to do a double crochet into the next chain one space. We're going to ignore that space that's closest to us, go to the chain one space. We're going to do six double crochets into every chain one space. And yes, I do realize that I made five double crochets instead of six, but I think this is a good learning opportunity. So let's just keep going. So as you can imagine, because I missed that double crochet in that very first chain one space, I will be left with a lot of yarn at the end. And I'm going to show you how you can manage your tension to still be able to make it work. Now, because we already have a standing crochet in this space, we're just going to do five double crochets to have six in total. All right, so we're back at the beginning and as we can see, I'm left with a lot of yarn left. So again, we know that to connect to the beginning chain we need a chain one worth of yarn so let's make a couple more chains to see how much yarn do we need to use up so here we have about four and a half worth of chains of this color that we still need to use up now we did almost have five chains worth of yarn that we still needed to use up, which if you remember is what happened in the last round. However, this round is a lot bigger, so I don't need to go all the way back. However, how I gauge this is purely on vibes, but I just figured I'd end about halfway and just try to loosen up starting from here. Now again, because this is not my natural tension, I'm having to go a lot looser. I need to make a very conscious effort and continue reminding myself to go looser and to keep it consistent. Now, if you're not used to working with color pulling yarn, it may feel weird for you to have some stitches in one tension and another stitches in a different tension but i can assure you at the end of the day when you have a whole blanket of these hexes you're not going to be able to tell the difference all right i did loosen up quite a bit 
let's see again how much yarn I'm left with. Alright, this time we've used a lot of this yarn up. We still have dark blue color left though. So again, let's see how much I'm left with. I have about two, a one and a half or two chains worth of the dark blue that I still need to use up. So I'm going to go back and loosen up a little bit more. And I'm not going to go all the way back considering that there's so little of this blue that is still left. I'm just going to stop wherever kind of feels right. And I'm just going to make sure that I loosen up even more than I was before. Alright, now we are done here again. I'm still left with just a little bit too much yarn about a chain worth of that blue yarn that is still left so i'm gonna do this one more time i'm gonna go back a little bit further than i did the previous time and then start loosening it up from there now here is another very good tip that i did not think of when i was working this round which is if you were done with your round and you find that you have a lot of yarn left over before you even go back and try to loosen up your tension first go back and look at all of your stitches make sure that you didn't miss any because that can happen a lot especially if you're kind of distracted and if you did miss a stitch then that's an easy fix just go back and fix it if you do have all your stitches and you have a lot of color left over, then you know at that point that you just need to loosen up. This time around, I did manage to use up all of the color. I'm fixing it here just because the yarn split directly below my hook. I'm just trying to fix that up. Now here we are, we managed to have the color change right when that double crochet was over. So we're going to connect to that standing crochet to start our next round. And we're going to take out all of the color that we need for this round. I promise we are very close to fixing up that five double crochet fan that I messed up earlier. It is right around here that I finally realized that I missed a double crochet in the previous round. Huh. I messed up in the previous round. Alright. That's why I was struggling to get that color. I need to undo it. <laughs> that explains a lot. That is another beauty of working with this type of yarn in a granny square hexi is it all in all, yes it sucks to have to go back and undo it and redo it, but this is a very small project and all. It would be way worse if for example you're making a sweater and you realize that you messed up like three inches above so it's really not that bad to have to go back and redo this round all right now that i know for sure that i have the correct number of stitches everywhere let's see how much yarn i'm left with at the end of this round Now that I have the correct number of stitches, I managed to get the color change to happen perfectly. Now to begin round four, we're almost done, 
Let's do a half double crochet in that first space, then an elongated single crochet into the space from round two, and another half double crochet in that same space. Now we're going to do half double crochets into the next three double crochets from the round below. Now go in between the two double crochets, make a double crochet. Now again we're going to do a half double crochet into the next three stitches. And that is the repeat, a half double crochet, elongated single crochet, half double crochet into the space, half double crochets into the next three stitches, a double crochet in between the two stitches, and a half double crochet into the next three stitches. Now I personally know that I need to go quite loose into the elongated single crochets in this round, so just keep that in mind. If you are left over with a lot of yarn in this round, then using up that yarn into the elongated single crochets is pretty a pretty easy solution now i will give you a heads up with this uh, specific color the soft white frigid this round is really easy for me to get it right i have another one as you've seen the black cyber leaf with that specific yarn i have to go so 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 loose on this round it is honestly quite a struggle a lot of the times so if this doesn't work as easily for you as it is for me do not feel discouraged i struggle a lot with the black cyber leaf skein All right, and this flower is tar starting to get a really nice shape. Let's see how much yarn I'm left with at the end of this round. And I managed to do it perfectly. So we are at the end. And this round is the absolute easiest for me at least because i'm always left off with a lot of yarn at the end so i just go with whatever tension feels naturally for me i know that at the end i'm still gonna be left with way too much yarn <laughs> to weave my ends with now again before we get started let's unravel all of the yarn that we need for this round Now for this round, I already did it, but you're going to do a chain one and a half double crochet into that same stitch. All around, we're going to do half double crochets into half double crochets. On the elongated single crochets, we're going to do a double crochet. Now again, these are half double crochets in the round below, so we're going to do half double crochets as well. And when we reach the double crochet from the round below, this is now our corner of the hexi. So we're going to do a half double crochet, chain one, and half double crochet into that same stitch. 
and you're gonna do that all the way around again on half double crochets you're gonna do half double crochets on elongated single crochets you're gonna do a double crochet and on the double crochets of the corners you're gonna do a half double crochet chain one half double crochet into the same stitch now if you're watching this as I'm releasing this video I do want to let you know I am planning on making kind of like a vlog video on me working on these hexes and then putting them together into making a blanket if you're coming from the future hopefully that video will be out yet I'm thinking on having it released by March 2024 just so that I can show the whole process and how did I put them together and how it looks at the end so I hope that you'll enjoy that video whenever it comes out and we are almost at the end so keep at it I will see you at the end all right we're coming up to the last stitch if you are here to bask in the glory of how cute this hexy looks isn't that such a fun and relatively hopefully easy way to use up this yarn if you enjoyed my tutorial i would beg you please leave a comment saying thank you travis travis is my husband and there is no way that I would have been able to figure out the cameras and capturing my hands and everything else if I was doing it by myself. I relied heavily on him. So please say thank you, Travis, in the comments. He's gonna love it. <laughs> also, go check out the Cat Lady channel and it's time for yarn. And uh, Marley Bird also has videos on YouTube talking about plant pulling yarn. Check them all out. I think that is going to be really helpful for you. That's all for today, guys. I hope you have a good time making these hexes. If you have any questions, I'll try my very best to respond them down below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!